Hi, Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. We dug up an old rose bush the other day and it had a large root. And so I decided to turn a vase. Now this would be a standard way to turn a vase, but look what difference there is instead of chopping it off and, and uh, parting it off to carve out the feet and let the roots contribute to the base of this vase. Now this is interesting. I had intended to turn it and sand it and then let it warp, but I put it away and it was about two weeks before I got back to it and it actually warped quite a bit, which made it very hard to sand, but it did it anyway and then carved out the feet. The wood got, by the way, was very soft to begin with and very hard in the final carving stage. So another good reason to do it while it's green and wet. But this vase has an interesting texture and feel because of the warp. It's got a significant shift over to one side seemingly, uh, some bark inclusions, and I like to touch this one. So let's turn this vase out of the root of a rose bush. This rose bush was likely over 25 years old. Sorry, rose lovers. It was in the wrong place at the wrong time. It was a chore to dig up. When I saw the size of the root, I thought it might be a candidate for some sort of vase. It's pretty wild, but I might be able to get something out of it. I tried to wash off as much of the dirt as I could. Then with a chainsaw, I trimmed it back to what looked like it might be stable. Maybe a carver would have left more, but this is good for me. Next, I'm mounting the root between centers with the branch end on a drive center and the root end is towards the tailstock. This is so I can cut a tenon as soon as possible on the root end. But the wood wants to escape. The drive center is not on wood that is very solid. I drilled out the spot for the drive center down to more solid wood. There's no totally solid wood in this block. Then continued to rough round the block with my large bow gouge. I'm starting to believe that there is some sort of vase inside this wood. It is just not easy finding it. Finally, I can cut a tenon and prepare to reverse the mount into a chuck. It will be impossible to find solid wood without a void or bark inclusion. If I tried, this would be a very small project. A flower pot style starts to emerge. Hopefully, the wood will hold together. This is large bull gouge work. Next, to hollow the vase, I decide to drill out the center with a Forstner bit. The bit is large enough that the chuck can follow the bit deeper into the hole. Now I want to enlarge the hollow to thin down the walls. I don't trust this wet wood to stay secure in the chuck this far out from the chuck. I'm not going to risk it, but I have a DIY steady rest that will resist the lateral pressure from my tools. This steady rest has come in handy many times when the project is long and far out from the chuck. I do the hollowing with a large bowl scraper. While doing more exterior work, I still want tailstock support. 
I have a cone used to sand sea urchin shells and a threaded live center, but the threads don't match. The cone is a one and a quarter inch, the live center is one inch, but a small adapter mates them up. This will support the project so that it should not come out of the chuck. I tried to start sanding with 80 grit, but the sandpaper loaded up almost immediately with wet wood. I decided to put it in a paper grocery bag for a day or two to allow the surface moisture to evaporate. This will make it easier to sand. It turns out that I left it for almost two weeks. Wow, it has moved. It feels very dry now. The root end at the tenon has warped outward, making my tenon almost useless. It seems that the top of the vase has shifted over about a half an inch. The wood is wavy all over. The bark inclusions have shrunk back and cracks have expanded. But I hope I can save it. I had intended to finish the vase before it warped, but it beat me to it. There is no way that this tenon will hold in a chuck and no good way to recut the tenon. I decide to do the best I can with my air-powered sander. Yes, the pad will follow the bumps and grooves, but given the shape that the vase has assumed, that's okay with me. I will not power up the lathe. The lathe is now only a handy tool holder. Even now the chuck is not holding well, so I use that sanding coat again to support the other end. It's pretty sloppy, but good enough for sanding. Originally, I had planned to part off the vase about an inch and a half from the very end. With this sloppy end, there is no way to safely do this. So I'm resorting to my right angle tool with a rasp bit. As I take off the wood beyond the tenon, I'm thinking about how far I need to cut it back and was looking at how the individual roots have spread out and the bark inclusions between them. So instead of hacking off the bottom, I'm going to follow the roots and use them as feet. I wish there were only three so they would self-level, but there are four roots, but I'll use them anyway. I switched to a smaller rasp bit in my high-speed carving tool. Boy, this rosewood is hard now that it is dry. This bit allows me to get into the smaller areas to improve the flow of the wood. Then I sanded with cloth-backed sandpaper to remove most of the rasp nards. After signing, I'm finishing the vase with walnut oil. This rose bush root has given me quite a ride. I paid attention to the wood when it said to keep the roots and not cut them off. This has given it a taller profile and tells a very different story. I'm a root, not a trunk. I'm unique. The wood has an interesting texture with bumps and hollows. It grows up from the base. I like it much better with the feet. They fit. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, tell your friends and send me your comments and questions. Every week I make a new wood turning video and add to the over 400 videos to choose from on my website. Please wear your full face shield anytime the lathe is running. Until next week's video, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns.